What's up everybody? Thank you for subscribing to the channel. We are on our way to 10,000 subscribers, which was my goal for last year, but then I kind of got off track. The whole COVID thing, I think it's just an excuse, but I got lazy. I got lazy. So anyways, we are headed to a 1970s property. It is a flip home and we are gonna go see Mark the inspector too as well. So hopefully we can get him on the channel and uh, see what we're gonna go find. Um, not all flip properties are bad, but we do find some pretty unique things in flip properties. So let's see if this one is up to par and if they did a good job. All right, let's uh, go check it out. Okay, first really good sign. We have a brand new roof on the property. And also what looks really good is they reflashed all the chimneys, chimneys. They reflashed the chimney, which looks really good. They did not put a cricket right here. We typically like to see a cricket on a brand new install, um, but they replaced all the boots, all the flues. Uh, you got a, a, a boot over there that's heavily tarred. It looks like it's uh, old, but that is new. Um, and yeah, this looks really nice. They have all the trees trimmed back really well, so no damage, just a little bit of debris. Uh, pretty minor stuff all the fasteners are sealed and uh, they got a new drip edge right here on the side and really good flashing and look at that they even have kick out down at the base who would have known installing kick out look at that on a flip home you see that kick out flashing you should start to get a really good vibes that this property is nice it's just a uh, little subtle hints that you notice as home inspectors that kind of add up being like, oh man, they're, they're looking at the small details. So it's harder for them to miss the major one. I did notice the uh, chimney cap here. We are gonna recommend for improvements on it. This can allow water penetration into the chimney area. So, and it will only get worse, right? So we'll recommend to repair the chimney cap. But on the big picture item, of the property. This is actually one of the minor things uh, to focus on if you're purchasing a property. So don't, you know, kill your deal over a chimney cap. This is pretty cheap when it comes to repairing or replacing a property. And most roofing companies will not touch chimney caps because they're affecting the integrity of the chimney. They'll typically recommend for some sort of chimney contractor to replace the top of a chimney. Sneaking up here on Mark, just checking out the panel. We always like to remove the cover and inspect the insides of every panel box to check out any deficiencies here. Uh, something that maybe spots out right away just from me looking. I don't know what he's uh, spotted, but you can see that we have a GE panel box and we have a square D breaker. So most panel boxes do not allow mismatch of name brands of breakers so we're going to write that up to recommend to switch out the breaker so uh, it meets manufacturer warranties or whatever and make sure it's installed properly another little minor detail is there's no screws on it recommend for screws to keep out small children but you never know and little missing knockout we do write these up on pretty much every inspection though uh, the biggest item is the mismatch of breakers. It can cause damage to the, the panel. We've seen those breakers actually melt in the past. We always like to walk up to the, the ground electro rod and kind of give it a little tug. You know, you want to give it a little wiggle there because if it moves, this should be, you know, eight feet plus into the ground. I can't get the number off my head right now. Shame on me. Um, but uh, if it moves, you know that it's damaged or it's not the right sizing. And then also uh, check the integrity of the wire. We fought, those fall out really easily a lot and they should be secured. The wire should be secured to the ground electro rod pretty well. Another thing you see uh, Mark doing there is what he did is he did the close pass 
around the property and now he's doing the wide pass to kind of look at the the bigger picture of the property so uh, the same thing I preach all the time all the other inspectors do it too as well and it kind of gives you the idea it gives you the bigger picture about the property you know is the structure moving is it settling you can look at the grading you can see the roof from a different angle so all of these things come into play by looking at the property close and then looking at it far away and it kind of give you a different element of looking at the structure another item here is we have a, a newer hvac system you can see that we have a 410a freon and uh but it's a an amer ameristar uh, it, this isn't like a name brand unit it is nice that it has been replaced and just a common test if you're a homeowner trying to determine if the the HVAC's working or not, just wave your hand across the unit. Feel if the air actually coming out is warmer than it is outside. So as I put my hand over the HVAC unit, I can feel, you know, the air is warmer. So that is a sign that the unit is performing. And also come over here, you can test the larger line here. And if it's cold, that's nice. And that's, that's a good sign. And then ho hold the, uh, the smaller unit, uh, line. And if it's hot, also a lot a sign that the, your unit is performing so right now these are just small tests just to try to get an idea hey is the hvac unit working properly or not another good sign here is we have uh we have pvc drain lines here so it looks like that maybe one point in time they replaced the sewer lines i always like to remove the cap and uh give a look down in the unit because sometimes they'll have these plastic pvc lines but they'll have cast iron at the bottom we got some roaches in there uh, but you can see here that that is pvc all the way at the bottom that's a that's a really good sign that we have uh pvc uh throughout the structure too as well so new roof new drain lines new hvac uh panel box looks like it's been updated just some minor repairs this property is actually looking uh, pretty good uh, for a flip property. So uh, re really nice uh, structure so far. So another reason why Mark uh, stepped further back over here, he noticed this post. Let's see if I can get it. You can see it's settled a little bit. You can see the old caulking lines of where the post used to be and uh, it shifted off the, the edge right here. And um, some people will be like, oh, right up foundation, foundation movement, foundation failure. But, you know, if you step back and you look at the, the big picture, you look at the brick line, there's no major movement. You don't have major separation between the freeze board. They could have replaced it, but also here, look at this. You got a window right here and there is no, this is old caulking, right? This is old. So you can see that there's no repairs done and there's no movement in between the windows either. So. Uh, you do have a little bit of old rot or freeze board separation here, but I believe this is due to the uh, poor install of the, there was no kick out flashing in the past. So they've replaced this, just didn't replace the old siding. So uh, that being said, just because you have one sign of foundation movement or settlement, this structure, this piece is actually not part of the whole structure. It's just helping support the roof line. You don't want to ride up the whole foundation and scare your client. This is a minor issue. It has just shifted and we'll tell the client to keep an eye on it. Another thing that we get all the time is uh, people asking, they see all these cracks in their driveway and they're like, is my foundation bad? Your driveway is not part of your foundation. It is actually poured completely separate and a lot of other things affect the condition of your of your driveway it's a lot thinner than your main slab too as well so drought trees a lot of other issues can affect the integrity of your driveway you also are driving across it a lot during times of drought which causes more movement and then you have cracks and it can crack and fail so and then once the cracks are formed then you get water in the cracks and then it causes other swelling issues you know the list goes on so anyways the cracks in your driveway are not related to the foundation of the home. So don't come up, see cracks in the driveway and run to the next property. It does not always mean that your foundation is failing. All right, here we go. Look at this, another good sign. We have a brand new water heater. But one thing that some inspectors can do or fail on that I see that happens 
often is they just walk up, they see a new, brand new water heater and they're like, hey, it's fine, write it up, do the dates, check the gas and it's fine. Um, and then they'll write up, you know, this thing that all t temperature pressure relief valve travels up, not properly installed. Uh, they'll write that up and move on. You know, there's actually other issues with this and it's behind the water heater. So make sure you get up and you look for the hard to see areas and you can see here we have some corrosion ah, pipes hot and we have a water leak and you can see down at the base there it's been leaking for a minute so just because you have something brand new don't automatically assume that it's okay and try to move on to the next item in your inspection you want to try to kind of get a full view of everything part of the water heater look behind it look around it and you'll be surprised how much you find in those areas that you don't see every day so look at look at the big picture look at everything try to follow all the steps look at the connections and um, yeah that's it so uh, let's move on to the next item get this a lot in garages you know loose outlet you just want to secure these in place uh, I barely want to add this to the vlog because I don't want people to think that this is like a huge issue it is an issue it will be in the report but also again kind of a, a minor issue when it comes to buying the property you can negotiate on that item of course you can ask them to fix it but if the, the seller says no it's been like that forever don't be like well i'm not gonna buy your property just remember that this is an older house you're gonna have some older issues and you want to focus on the major items roof foundation exterior siding you know water heater your hvac system your plumbing your plumbing lines you know, one little loose outlet should not kill the deal of your property. All right, next item, we write this up often. We are also WDI certified, wood destroying insect by the TDA. And uh, right here we have wood within the driplet edge of the property. And this does invite termites to the structure, w rotting wood right next to the property. We'll dig around here. We did not find any termites, but we'll recommend to remove it. And if you do not want to remove this for whatever reason, then you have to treat in this area to help prevent termites to your structure. So with that being said, please take the time and hit that like and subscribe button. We're trying to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I'm doing my best. You know, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm trying to post a video weekly, you know, just doing my thing. But uh, yeah, just hit the subscribe button. You know, you, you like this content. Another common find we find on a lot of exterior doors is... You know, we'll check the door for function, we'll check it for seal, and then right here in the corner, you find the the area where water intrusion happens. We'll check the integrity of the door, but the doors fail a lot in these locations that causes rot. Okay, when inspecting, you're always looking for something that stands out or something that is a little different. And then if you can see right here, we have, you know, a discoloration in the brick. And I automatically thought, okay, well, there's moisture maybe coming in from behind the wall. You wanna think what's on the other side of the wall, but then also remember we have a new HVAC system on the exterior. I haven't been in the attic or on the interior yet, just working on the outside. Uh, but we also have the secondary drain line right here and it looks like it has, has poured in this location in the past. So it may indicate that, you know, there was a lot of splashing going on and it uh, have, has failed in the past. So if there's a, a kitchen or a sink or something in this area, we'll run it also and test for moisture on that side of the wall. So again, you don't want to assume, but uh, this is probably due to, you know, the, the old HVAC system leaking for a long period of time and it stained the brick. But you also want to look on the other side of the structure just in case there's like a bathroom or, you know, sinks or some sort of water penetration in that area. One thing that we do write up to, it is not regulated by Trek or really required for inspectors to do. But we do write up uh, some fences if the fence is damaged in locations. We don't stress on it, but again, we just write this up so the client is more informed about the property that they're moving in because wood's not cheap and fences are expensive. So um, we'll, we'll write it up to let them know that it's not, there is some areas that are in need of repair. Coming in, we got Mark and he uh, found something Google. So listen to him. Uh, we're inspecting the fireplace here today. Um, this fireplace, um, they've obviously redone the outside surface. So whenever we see that, one of the things we want to look for is what's behind here. 
Um, and so you can see that this right here, this is the, the drywall. Um, that's gonna be a flammable material. And then up here where the lintel is holding the, the brick, uh, there's actually a gap. And uh, you got the drywall here again, and then back here is the wood um, structure of the house. So that's gonna be flammable as well. And then just some other things we noticed, the firebox uh, needs some mortar improvement. And if you stick your head way up in here, we can see the damper door is kind of broken and it doesn't really function very well. Um, so uh, they currently have this electric log system going. So they're not burning anything uh, flammable, but if the new owner comes in and wants to burn a real fire in here, um, that could be a, a hazard. So what Mark found is just letting you know, we'll, we'll let the clients know not to burn wood in this fireplace. If they want to keep it, that's fine. They want to use a little electric heater. It should be okay. They definitely want to keep an eye on it for any heat source because wood and hot stuff sets on fire and we don't want this house to burn down. So we'll, we'll let, inform the clients that it's not properly installed. All right, coming up to the attic space. Another common call out is that the attic ladder is not properly insulated, which is almost written up on every single report. But uh, also, this always kind of annoys me. You can see the attic ladder is installed backwards. So you actually have to lift yourself up and crawl over. So let me do that real quick. Okay, uh, we found a few things in uh, this attic space. Uh, me talking out my butt about the outside, about uh, that that stain is probably old. Well, I was wrong. Uh, there is water in the pan with the, with the coils. So it has been leaking and it's leaking now. So we definitely need some sort of HX service, but also it's really hot outside. You know, it's like, it's like 105 or something. I don't know, something stupid. And, um, and whenever I walked inside from about being outside for, you know, like an hour and a half, an hour and walked inside and I didn't get that rush of cold air either. So that automatically makes me think that there's something wrong. I was out there saying that the, the condenser is good, but again, just because you have one good sign doesn't, you don't just automatically assume that it's okay and write it up is okay. You wanna go through the steps and the processes to look at everything. So um, now we're at the coils and we can see there's water in the pan. You know, the, the differentials aren't really that great uh, for the property running. So we're going to recommend for an HVAC technician to come out and check it out. Another sign too, right here, you can see, uh, that we have some rodent feces. And, uh, so we have some rodent activity in the attic space. So we're going to write that, write that up at two as well. So we can see some pretty freshly repaired, uh, galvanized water lines. You can see it's still even gooey from the prior plumber. And we have a shark bite connection to copper. And so this is indicating that they've had some sort of plumbing uh, repair in the past. And we're gonna write this up uh, to let them know that they have had issues in the past and they've been replacing it. And what we notice about galvanized water lines in older properties is if repairing it in one spot and you know, it's uh, <laughs> so hot. Uh, you're repairing it in one spot and then um, you only repaired it in that one spot it's probably going to leak somewhere else eventually so we'll let the client know that they probably want to get a quote just to see how much it will cost to replace it all and then they can either you know negotiate it on it or understand that that's how much it's going to cost uh to fix all the plumbing in their property when it uh, fails okay it's hot man if you want to be an inspector just just expect some heat everyone always thinks like oh i can do this job just make sure that you can handle heat. You're somewhat physically capable. You can bend down, crawl, whatever. It's just, it's just hot. Just get used to the heat. I stay hydrated. But anyways, let's do a conclusion, right? Uh, conclusion, I'd say overall pretty good, but also pretty good is always relative to your client. What's important to them? And so whenever we go over the facts, we only let, give them the facts. Be like, hey, these are the things you wanna focus on moving into the structure. So. Let's just start from the top down when it, with the five major components. Roof, roof looks okay, it looks brand new. You're good, probably gonna have you know zero issues and if you do, it's very minor. Foundation, foundation looks solid. You have some minor, minor settlement in the front of the structure, which is pretty uh, little. Uh, HVAC, HVAC, you do uh, need an HVAC person to come in and come and service the unit. It's probably just a service. 
uh, it's just underperforming a little bit and we want to make sure that it uh, nothing needs to be replaced and if it does need to be replaced it's probably under warranty because the unit looks brand new as long as it was installed by an HVAC technician and the manufacturer warranty was installed Four plumbing right uh, so when we're coming down to the plumbing uh, section of the report the plumbing is actually probably one of their major items you have galvanized you have copper and you have pvc in the structure so they've had issues with plumbing uh, do we find any active water leaks we only found one at the water heater uh, pretty minor easy fix but uh, they do have some sort of leak issue and they've had leaks in the past so we want them to get a quote from the plumber to get an idea of how much it costs to repair the whole thing you know how much does it cost to replumb the property it's an old structure and galvanized water lines are failing across all of houston so we want them to focus on that major piece that's probably the most expensive item that they're going to run into moving into the structure and they replace the underground plumbing that's what it looks like so maybe get some sort of receipt showing what plans were done with the underground plumbing and the fifth was the electrical we only really found some loose outlets and you know the breaker in the panel box uh, again minor stuff so whew, that was a that was a quick breakdown done that once or twice so that's chris with a action please hit that like and subscribe button give us a follow and let me know if you like this content and catch us on the next one see you guys thanks bye i almost forgot uh, while you're hitting that like subscribe button we'll remind them about the fireplace that is a major component we don't want them to burn down their house all right bye again <laughs>